Hello everyone and welcome to the class on web application. Today in this class we will be learning how to create a test script to test a web application, identify QTP functions while using testing a web application, and a look at test results for a test script which is based on testing a web application. So let's start by opening QTP first. One important thing you have to remember while testing a web application is make sure that you have selected the web add-in when you open QTP. Only by selecting the web add-in you will be able to record the actions that you perform on a web application. If the web add-in is not located then you will not be able to record a test script for a web application. Now you see by default there are three add-ins. ActiveX, Visual Basic, and Web. As I explained before, by letting all of these add-ins, say for example, if Web add-in is loaded, then QTP will load all the functions that are associated to test a web application, so that you can use those functions. To record a test script for all the actions that are performed on the web application, if you have not loaded Web add-in, then you will not be able to record test script on your web application. And all the functions related to a web application will not be available for you to use. So you have to load the web add-in. And then click on OK. Let's open a new test. Before we begin recording actions, let's take a look at the file. Settings. Under the settings, you can see various tabs, like Properties, Run, Resources, Parameters, Environment, Web, and Recovery. These are the different tabs that are available. Only when you load a web add-in will you be able to see a web tab here. If the web add-in is not loaded, then you will not see the web tab. Now take a look at this web tab. It has a browser navigation timeout of 60 seconds. This is the time the QTP waits for a particular page to get com refreshed completely. When you are testing a web application, let's say that you click on a link in a web page, then it will take you to another web page. QTP will wait for 60 seconds for that page to get loaded completely. If the page takes more than 60 seconds to get loaded, then QTP displays an error message. So this is the default synchronization time, or this is the global synchronization time for a web application. You can change it to a desired time if you want. 60 seconds is the time that has been specified here. Now let's start by recording a simple test script on a web application. The commonly used web application, Yahoo Mail. Let's open the Yahoo Mail page. Now we will start recording actions by logging into a mailbox. And then we will go to the inbox. And then we will exit out of the mail. So before we do that, let's take a look at record and run settings. Go to automation. Select record and run settings. Since we are testing a web application, you have to look at the web tab. But make sure that under the Windows application, select the option Record and Run on any open Windows-based application. Also make sure that you have not opened any Windows-based application. And you should not perform any actions on any Windows-based application while recording. So under the Web tab, we can select either the option Record and Run on any open browser. If you are going to keep the browser open before you start recording or run the test script, or you write a separate function here, like Invoke Application, to invoke the Internet Explorer. Or you can go with the second option, where you can ask QTP to open a particular web page. Using the Internet Explorer, and you can select the option Do Not Record and Run on a Browser that are already open. By this option, QTP will be recording actions only on this browser, which is open by QTP, and it will not record actions on any other browser other than the one QTP has opened itself. And it will also close the browser when the test run closes. For now, we will go with the first option, where we will have the browser open, and then we will record and run on this browser that is already open. 
So click on OK. We will start by clicking on the record button. So let's log in to the dummy email ID that we have created. The user ID for this email is learn underscore dom and the password is mercury. Click on sign in. Then click on the check mail button which takes you to the inbox. Once you are there, we will just click on the sign off. We will leave the browser as it is instead of closing it. Click on stop. Now let's take a look at the test script here. You can see that this script is slightly different from the script that we recorded before the Windows application. When you are recording actions on a Windows-based application, we used to have something like Window here in the script instead of the browser. Then we had a dialog box with the name of that particular window. Then we had something like Set or Click operations, which is similar here. When you are recording a test script on a web application, first you will see the browser, which will be the first object in the hierarchy. And inside the browser, you will have the name of the browser. Then is the page with the name of the page. While we were recording actions on the flight application, then we had functions like Windows Edit, WinEdit. We did not have something like WebEdit. Every function related to a web application will have a prefix starting with web, like WebEdit, WebButton, WebListBox, etc. This way you will know that these are all the web functions. And these operations like set click, set secure, are the same. Those are similar to the Windows applications. The slight difference you will see in the script is you will see the browser name, page name, then you will see web edit, on which you enter some information, and then web button, where you click on. You will see a link if you have clicked on any link in the web page. So this is how a test script looks when you are recording a web application. Now let's take a look at the step generator. Go to Insert, select Step Generator. Under Step Generator, you can see the various steps that are available for the web application. If you select Test Objects, the test object you have selected is Sign Out. Sign Out is the link, and you can see Sign Out has all the operations that you can perform. Like, you can click on link, you can check if that link exists or not, and you can get the value of a particular property of that link. Or you can use the weight property to add a synchronization on that object. So these all are the different operations that you can perform on the sign out object. And these are similar to the operations that are there for the Windows application. There will be only a few slight differences. Now let's close the step generator and run the test script and have a look at the test result. We now have seen how to make the settings for testing a web application based on your needs. Always remember to load the web add-in before you're recording the actions on a web application. The other important thing you have to remember is open the browser only after you open QTP. If a browser has been opened before you open QTP, and when you try to record actions on the browser, then QTP will not record anything. Even though you click on Record button and start performing actions on the browser. And you might wonder what is wrong and why it is not recording. So you must always remember that any application that you are testing should be open only after you open QTP. So the first step is to open QTP. Then open the application or the browser which you are testing. Let's navigate to the Yahoo Mail site. And then we will run the test script. Now you can see that we successfully executed the script, and the result format is similar to that generated for Windows applications. This is the test iteration, similar to the Windows test results. As you can see, the web results also displays the number of iterations 
like in the case of Windows application. Then you can see the action. Look at the result here. When we have looked at the test results of the Windows application, we used to see something like the main Windows box or the Dialogs box right. But here you will first see the browser. This is the name of the browser, Yahoo Mail, the best. Then you will see the pages on which you have performed actions. Under Yahoo Mail, the best, page we have entered the user ID, password, and clicked on the sign in button. And here you see is another page where you clicked on the check mail button. Next we clicked on sign out. So these all are the different pages under this browser on which we performed actions. First the browser will be displayed, then the pages will be displayed, and then the actions performed on these pages will be displayed under the respective page. So this is similar to Windows test results where we first used to see Window, then the dialog box, then the actions that we performed inside that window. So testing a web application is nothing different from testing a Windows application. You will start recording by loading a web add-in first, and then you will use the same kind of operations like clicking a button or setting a value to a web edit box. Where before it used to be a win edit box, and now it's a web edit box. You will also perform actions like clicking a link that takes you to another page. And you can also see the different functions available for each of these objects by going through the step generator and you can use those operations on that web object. So in this class we have learned how to test a web application by loading a web add-in and how to analyze the test results for a web application. With this we will conclude the class. Thank you.